In late July of 2025, Canon released firmware updates for virtually all of their current and recent production hybrid and cinema cameras. For most of these cameras, including the R5C, the list of updates and additions was quite short, mainly consisting of a new camera protection password function. Now that said, before we get into the details of this update, let me start with a quick reminder on firmware updates for Canon Cinema EOS cameras and the R5C specifically. To start with, the firmware file must be on an SD card and camera must be upgraded in video mode. Canon Cinema EOS cameras, especially or including the R5C, will not look for firmware files on CF Express cards, so you can't use them. Secondly, the Cinema EOS firmware updates will reset all of your video mode settings to their defaults. Fortunately, photo mode settings are not affected, so you don't have to worry about them. So, before proceeding with any video firmware or any firmware update for the R5C or any other Cinema EOS camera, I always recommend backing up your camera's settings to an SD card. Now, Canon doesn't recommend using the same SD card for your settings as you do for the firmware update. However, I've done, always done that. I've never had a problem doing that. But the thing to remember is that you don't want to format the card after you've saved your backup settings to it, or otherwise you won't have backup settings anymore. To back up your camera settings, go to page one of the system setup menu and select the transfer menu slash CP entry. On the next screen, select save and then finally select save to SD card. If the card already has settings on it, you'll be asked if you want to overwrite those settings or cancel the process. If you do want to keep the settings on the card, you can either use a different SD card or you can plug the card into your computer and move the settings off of it to your computer or another storage device. The settings are found in the private slash cam set folder on the card. Also, remember that while the settings that you back up save all of the menu settings and your custom picture files, it doesn't save your custom white balances or the current exposure settings. So you will need to reset your custom A and B white balances after update. And you will also want to remember to run the auto black balance process because that information gets cleared as well. Once you've backed up your video mode settings, proceed to the firmware update itself. This is done using the firmware entry on the bottom of page 9 of the system setup menu. Now what could be called the headline feature in this update is the new pin slash password protection function. This function is implemented in response to an EU technical directive for protecting network connected devices and personal information on them, but be in or keep in mind it only protects the camera's settings, not your images on your cards. Now I've already covered this function for the R5 and R5 Mark II and other videos. And put simply, all of the hybrid cameras work basically the same way. However, the R5C isn't just an EOS hybrid or a cinema camera. And the process here is, well, a bit more something. If you've seen either of those videos, you know I don't particularly like how Can Canon has implemented the feature. It's usability is bad. While I don't disagree with the idea in theory, the implementation matters, and the implementation on Canon's non-cinema cameras is bad enough to render the function largely useless. The implementation on the pure cinema EOS cameras, for the most part, also follows what Canon did on their hybrid cameras, though somehow managed, Canon did manage to make the login prompt slightly worse in subtle ways for such as for example, that it won't auto-select the OK after you fill in your password, so you can just hit set again to continue. The real problem here is that the R5C takes things a step further. Since the R5C uses both the Cinema EOS OS in video mode and the standard EOS OS in photo mode, Canon's engineers have chosen to implement the password slash pin code functionality and yes, it's called two different things in the two different OSs as completely separate systems. Yes, you heard me right, separate systems. 
On the R5C, you have to configure your password and pin codes separately, once in photo mode and once in video mode. Anyway, once the camera has rebooted from the firmware update, you'll have to set the date and time and a password before you can use the camera. The process to set the password is your standard password setup procedure. You'll first enter a new six digit pin code, then repeat the same code a second time to confirm that you've entered it correctly. Now where the R5C goes further off the rails is that the video mode pin is not synchronized with the photo mode password. So not only do you have to set up a pin code in video mode on first boot after updating the firmware, but you will also want to switch the camera over into photo mode and repeat the process there. Now the photo mode process uses the same procedure as the R5, and I've linked a video on that in all the usual places if you need to go reference how to do that. For the rest of this video, I am going to focus on the video mode pin code function on its own. I'd also like to reiterate at this, this point the same warnings that I've made in my other videos about this, which is to say, write down your pin code and password somewhere and keep it safe. If you lose it and get locked out of the camera, or for example, Canon changes the camera, uh, a future firmware update re-enables the lock screen, you will need your pin code to either change the password or access the camera without having to completely re uh, reset the camera's settings to regain access. I should also note, you cannot disable, clear, or otherwise remove the pin code completely from the camera. The only thing you can do to streamline this is disable the power on login prompt. Now, I also want to underscore that the video mode pin code and photo mode passwords are not and their related settings, I should say, are not synchronized. If you change your pin in video mode, you will have to manually change your password in photo mode to match if you want them to. The same also goes for the startup password prompt settings. They're not synchronized as well. Now, once the camera is set up, by default, you'll be prompted to enter your pin code on power up or when it wakes from power, auto power off. And like the photo cameras, the login screen is anything but nice to use. To enter your pin code, touch the highlighted text box or press the set button. Then enter your pin code using the now displayed numpad. You can do this using the touch screen or with the physical select dial or the joystick to highlight a number and then use set or press straight in on the joystick to select it. Neither the grip or top dials can be used in this menu. Now, once you've entered your pin, press the menu button, either the physical one or the virtual one on the touch screen to continue. This will take you back to the previous screen where your password will be shown as asterisk in the previously selected text box. At this point, you will need to manually select OK to proceed. You can do this either by touching the virtual OK button directly or using the select dial or joystick to highlight the OK button and press set to select it. In video mode, the camera does not automatically select OK once the pin prompt is entered. In addition to entering your pin code on the screen, there is also a do not require pin code again checkbox that you can check to disable this logon prompt going forward. Now, while the logon prompt is active, the camera will not enable the USB-C port or the network interfaces on the WFT-R10 wireless file transmitter grip. This means that if you use USB power delivery, or, or that is your power preferred way to power your camera, that will not be enabled until after you enter your pin on the camera. Additionally, I have found that for some reason with this change, my small rig VB99 Pro battery will no longer renegotiate to the higher power 9 volt USB PD power profile that's necessary to use it when shooting with the camera if it's been plugged into the camera before the camera has been turned on. Interestingly, this happens in both photo and video modes on the R5C, and it wasn't a problem with the battery prior to this update. It's also not a problem on the R5 or R5 Mark II with their latest comparable firmware, so it is something specific to this camera. 
Now I've only run into this problem with this one specific model of battery. Every other USB PD battery or charger that I work or have tried with the camera works correctly and automatically renegotiates. But clearly there has been a change in the USB power delivery compatibility with the way the camera handles it. And it's something to be aware of if you are using USB power delivery for bad camera power. On top of that, the camera will still charge the battery over USB when it is turned off, even if the pin log on screen is enabled. So it still does some USB power delivery negotiation, even with this system set up. Now, in addition to the startup pin, uh, pin code screen, this function also adds two new menus to the camera. Both of these menus are found at the bottom of page nine of the system setup menu page. The first is the new pin code management menu, where you will find options for enabling and disabling the boot prompt and changing your pin code. Now, that said, another oddity in all of this is that the camera can disable these menu entries so that you can't actually use them. And like usual, the manual doesn't say anything about this. So far, I have found that if the camera is currently powered with USB power delivery, you can't actually change any of the pin management functions. So not cha can't change your pin code, can't enable or disable the boot screen. In any event, the first entry here, pin code request, allows you to enable or disable the power on login prompt. On selecting this to change that setting, you will be prompted to enter your pin code before you can make any changes. The second option, pin code change, is where you go to change your pin itself. This process follows a standard password change procedure. You enter your current password, the new password, and finally repeat the new password to confirm that it's correct before continuing. Now, if you are an R5 or R5 Mark II user as well, you might also notice that there is no redundant entry in this menu to clear the camera settings. If you want to clear the camera settings, you use the standard reset entry on page one of the system setup menu. The second new en menu entry is the camera's log function. This is found under the access log display, immediately below the pin code management menu entry on page nine of the aforementioned system setup menu section. The access log shows some relevant changes made to the camera settings, such as changes to the pin code, enabling or disabling the login prompt, loading camera settings from a card, and so on. Network settings are also supposed to be logged here as well, but since I don't have the WFT R10 network interface, I can't actually do anything with the networking on the camera. Finally, your pin code is not saved when you restore or save settings to a card from the camera or transfer them to another camera. So with the new pin code function out of the way, let's briefly talk about the two other changes that came with this update. First is the ability to directly update the firmware from the camera over a network without having to use your phone or a card. Now, I could certainly see where this is a nice to have feature, but with the R5C, and given how the R5C handles firmware updates, specifically that they're required to be done in video mode, I think this is ultimately far less useful than it is on Canon's other hybrid cameras. The problem here is that the video mode does not support using the camera's built-in Wi-Fi hardware for any kind of network connection. And this update doesn't add support for that hardware either. Therefore, the only people who will be able to use the network update are users who have wait, went out and bought the $1,000 WFT R10 wireless transfer grip. On top of that, given the limitations of the update procedure, I'm really not sure how useful this function is as a convenience feature. Yes, sure, OTA uh, or over-the-air updates is a faster way to do it than downloading things and putting it on a card. But firmware updates on the R5C are already a big enough hassle with needing the with it resetting the settings and therefore meaning you have to save and ever load settings all the, uh, all over it or all and all of that other extra process that loading a firmware from the network versus a card doesn't seem like it makes any real difference in the process of upgrading the firmware. It certainly doesn't make it that much faster. And of course, you still can't do it if you don't have the network grip. Now, the final update in this update 
is the ability to protect images when rating them in photo mode. Now, since this video is focused on the video mode side of things on the R5C, this operation is done exactly the same way as it is on an R5. If you're interested in the details of using this function, check out my video on the R5 firmware update, which I've linked in all the usual places. So that covers what's new in firmware 1.1.1.1 for the R5C. Unfortunately, Canon hasn't delivered any great new functionality as for us as photographers or cinematographers. Just this poorly designed pin password system. And again, to reiterate, I am not opposed to having a pin code or password on my camera. The problem is, is that I don't see any sane pa photographer using it given the current way it's implemented. The interface is just too clunky and slow to really be effective. At a minimum, Canon needs to redesign the interface to be more streamlined like it is on a smartphone. On top of that, the R5C needs to have the photo and video mode pin and password systems synchronized. Yes, I know, you could argue that it makes sense to have them separate. You know, for example, you might only have network information in photo mode where you can actually use the internal wireless uh, equipment. However, separate settings that can get out of sync only add confusion and complexity, which in turn ultimately ruins the usability and therefore drives people away from actually using the system by making it more frustrating. On top of that, Canon really needs to add an idle lock timeout that's separate from the Canon's power off timeout. At least this applies in photo mode where there is an auto power off setting. I should be able to keep a short auto power off time to save battery life when I'm working in an environment, but not have to enter the password every minute or two when my camera powers down while I'm in the process of setting up or looking for a composition. Finally, at least for completeness, there really should be an optional setting to factory reset the camera after 10 failed login attempts, instead of having a timeout or a power cycle to reset the attempts counter and let you keep trying. Technically, I could you could argue it's not necessary given the amount of information that's on the camera, but at least it takes the intent of this functionality to its logical conclusion. That said, I hope you found this useful, or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to help and support this channel, you can help us for free by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment with your experiences. Likewise, you can support us by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.